Japan is the model for success under QE. I've heard this countless times. It's odd though because the economy is slowly but surely rotting away as the intervention gets worse and worse. If the economy was in good condition, there would be absolutely no need for this. That's not the case now, is it? All central banks have decided to sacrifice their currencies in order to keep their Ponzi schemes going longer. This should be interesting. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to have our focus particularly on Japan. I want to talk about what's been happening with the central bank, the activities that they've been up to, and I want to show you some new details as well. We'll begin with those first. The Bank of Japan will overtake a state-run pension fund as the top shareholder in the Tokyo-listed companies as early as 2020. This is showing concerns rising regarding the central bank's outsized role in the nation's capital market. What are they doing there? How long are they going to be there for? What is their intended purpose? Are they going to buy everything and anything? That's what it looks like. And many people are thinking to themselves, what is the future of Japan in this light? The BOJ has held over $250 billion worth in ETFs as of the end of March, 4.7% of the total market cap of the first section of the Tokyo Stock Exchange. Now you look at this, this is just the ETFs. They have printed a lot of money and I will show you the totals here. The BOJ has likely become the top shareholder in 23 companies through its ETF holdings. It was among the top 10 for 49.7% of all Tokyo listed companies at the end of March. You have to understand what that means. 50% of all of the stocks in Japan, it's in the top 10 shareholders. What does that tell you? Think about that for a second. Half of all the stocks, probably the top half, they buy up half of these companies shares, top 10 shareholder within them. That to me shows how desperate they are. I just did a video yesterday talking about about what China is up to. They're literally subsidizing phones or going to supposedly subsidize phones, appliances, cars, and why? Because the economy is doing well? I don't know. Maybe maybe that's why. That, that would be crazy to me, but maybe that's why. Because it's doing so well, they're going to give up more money to then save it? I, you know, I don't really understand that logic, but you know, maybe we think differently. The Bank of Japan, you're looking at the total assets. This is just showing you that they've printed trillions of dollars worth, and this is only getting worse as time goes on. There is a lot of discussion. Are they doing a stealth taper? Are they going to continue this forever? I want to show you this. Going through the 2000s, not much. Not much is going on here. However, once 2012, 2013 begins, we can see the parabolic rise in the amount of money that they printed this is unbelievable to see how much they will you know really stretch this out into this is unacceptable if you are thinking about the future of this currency the future of this country because what happens to all of this money that they've printed they can never sell it there's no possible way they are now the top 10 shareholder in half of the companies what if they started to sell and suddenly that would become a very big issue for a lot of people well, you say, well, they'll just hang on forever. Okay, so they're going to maintain this forever, right? Well, does that mean they're going to continue to buy more? If they're going to buy more, of course, that dilutes the currency even further. This is unacceptable as far as I'm concerned, but they're not alone. Bank of Japan is just one central bank that's doing this. As Japan stocks stabilize, BOJ's ETF buying is at its lowest since 2016. Congratulations, even though it's really bad regardless. This is very funny because they try to make it seem as if, don't worry about it, they're doing what they need to do. Look at this here. Reduction in buying isn't a stealth taper. They actually had to come out and tell everybody, don't worry, we're not tapering. Don't worry, don't panic. The Bank of Japan may be pairing purchases of ETFs to take advantage of the stock market's stability. And that's what they're suggesting to you. However, I know that this will turn around eventually. They've already
already printed trillions of dollars worth, my goodness, do they really need to print any more? Looks like they will regardless. In the bottom paragraph, they basically suggest that they are not tapering, don't worry about it, but they said that an increasing number of economists see additional stimulus as the next policy step. The last thing that Japan needs right now is more stimulus. They need to stop what they're doing and actually fix the root cause of the problem, but they won't. They've had these zombie companies that have been there for decades. They have to fix them. They have to let them fail if that's what it means. But of course, they will not do this. They will not admit their failure. And as a result, they're going to be dealing with a big problem in the end. This is not the model for success. You're looking at the chart here just showing you the BOJ's ETF buying has slowed after purchases reached a record in 2018. 2018 was funny because this was one that governments around the world had been warning about that we would see some slowdown and we got there that's for sure. Then 2019 they quickly realized that they needed to up their game. Now the Bank of Japan has been printing less apparently but all other governments have decided decided to inject more. But don't fear because they're not done yet, that's for sure. This is actually directly from the BOJ's website. You can see all the numbers, the monetary base, current account balance. You could see that their interest rate is actually minus 0.1%. We've got negative rates in many countries in the world today. We have negative rates on even the debt instruments, bonds that these countries are giving out. I mean, come on, there's no possible way that this is sustainable over a long period of time, despite what they keep on telling us. Now, right on their own website, this is, this I had to just bring it up, I had to. On the Bank of Japan's own website, what is monetary policy and how is it carried out in Japan? There was this very, very strange belief that they weren't printing money and the way that they did so wasn't what we were told it was. Okay, so if you don't understand how this works, how interest rates are set and how they actually go about printing money, it's referred to as open market market operations okay this is very common the central banks do it they manipulate how this is set look if you want to set the interest rate at let's just say in this example here minus 0.1 percent it's not as if they go and enter that into a computer they have to do these open market operations the bank encourages short and long-term interest rates to remain at target levels and purchases assets mainly through open market operations. They are telling you directly on the central bank's own website what they do in order to make this happen. They print money out of thin air and they manipulate interest rates. So in doing so, in order to keep interest rates this low, they have to print money. It is completely completely unsustainable to be able to monitor this level here without consistently injecting okay there's no way it's gonna happen they're going to have to either allow interest rates to rise or stop their money printing you tell me this page directly on the Bank of Japan's website also shows you the purchases of ETFs and REITs. And you can see if you click on one of these, it breaks it down completely. This happens to be one of them. It shows you an Excel format here. If you wanted to, I'm not gonna break it down, but basically you can just see all the details for yourself. So if you wanted to track this right down to the details directly from the sources themselves, you could do that, okay? If you wanted to get into that level of detail, by all means, please do so. The information is there what I'm trying to do is show you where all of this data is if you want to track and trace it it's there links will be in the description under the sources it's important to see what central banks are up to at all times you know what I personally believe I've said this hundreds and maybe even thousands of times now but I still get the comments so I'm gonna mention it again basically what I do believe is that in the next crisis we will find that the central banks pose as the saviors they're gonna come out they're gonna buy anything and 
and everything and people are going to beg for it. That's why you have to stretch this out as long as possible. Hopefully this will go sooner rather than later. The sooner it happens, the less devastating it will be. The longer it goes on for, the worse it's going to be. There's no other way to put it. That's always what happens. The higher up it goes, the further down, the faster down it goes. So you hope that it will have started in October and then it would have fallen on a slow pace right through into this year. They could fix up whatever issues they were present, but instead they like to prolong it. They printed up the currency and as a result, there's going to be punishment later on. There's no other way to put it. I'm going to end the video there. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, you're supporting this channel. So I do appreciate that very much. Last but not least, if you want the financial education you weren't taught in school, these two books have everything you need from the foundation history, the asset classes, making money so much more. Check them out at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook, that's available at themoneygps.com. The central banks are always up to no good. If you haven't seen this video yet, definitely check it out and get into some of that detail. So click on it and I will see you there.